Good morning, students. I'm Mr. Boscarini, a for our unit on exploring contact and non-contact forces. Today, we're going to calculate pressure. In the previous lesson, we have seen uh, how we can apply pressure to a solid surface. So we've seen some examples of high pressure, low pressure, how we can make pressure bigger or smaller by changing either the force or the area over which that force is applied. Today, of course, we already did that practically. Now, identify the factors that determine the size of pressure on a solid, but more important today, we're really going to see how we can calculate pressure. So now we have three physical quantities which are linked together, pressure, force, and surface area. And like anything in physics, we know that if we have some physical quantities which are related to each other, there must be some formula. So we need to come up with a formula that allows us to find the pressure if we know the force in the area. So we know that the pressure is the combined effect of the force applied and the surface area over which this force is acting. But how are these two quantities combined? And we have to think, um, if you remember from the previous lesson, we saw that the bigger the force, the bigger the pressure. That makes perfectly sense. So it, you, we have to think that force and pressure are uh, probably directly proportional. If I double the force, I will double the pressure. On the other hand, the relationship with area is different. We know if we make the area bigger, pressure will decrease. And if I make the area smaller, pressure will increase. So it's definitely not a directly proportional uh, relationship, but will be an inversely proportional relationship. And indeed, what comes out as a definition of pressure is that pressure is defined as the ratio. And remember, ratio means division, means one thing divided by another. So it's a ratio between the force and the surface area over which it is exerted. Remember, exerted is another way of saying applied. So let's see what is the formula for pressure. So we saw that pressure is defined as a ratio. So let's write this down. So pressure, pressure for now, we're going to write it as words, but in a few minutes, we're going to move to symbols. So pressure equals to the ratio. So ratio is a division. The best way to represent this is by doing a fraction. Okay, so we're doing our line of fraction and between the force. Now that means force is at the numerator. So it's the quantity that we are dividing. So we're writing here force and the surface area. So a surface area, which I will just write as area. Hmm? is the quantity that goes below at the denominator. So this is our formula for pressure. Pressure equals force over area, or force divided by area. And this is not the first time we meet um, a, a physical formula where we have one quantity divided by the other. If you remember, one of the earliest examples was the formula for average speed, where average speed is, divide, is defined as distance traveled over time taken. And we have seen how we can rearrange this kind of formulas if instead of finding our main quantity here, in this case pressure, we want to find the number at the numerator or the number at the denominator. So, not surprisingly, like we did in the past with average speed, we can use the magic triangle. And here we have a magic triangle for the case of pressure. And as you can see now, I move from words to symbols, but it's pretty straightforward understanding which is which. So, F, of course, stands for force. A stands for area or surface area, but I will just write area. And P, of course, stands for pressure. Mm? 
Now, I hope you all remember how we can use the magic triangle to solve problems with force, pressure, and area. It's exactly the same thing we did when we were to, to uh, solve problems for speed, time, and distance. So let's start with the basic question. Uh, I know the force and I know the area and I want to find the pressure. So what I need to do, I need to cover pressure. So I'll move my hand here, I will cover pressure, and what I get, I get that pressure is force over area, which is exactly the formula we had a minute ago. So let's write that, one, that formula again, this time using symbols. So we have P, standing for pressure, equals to force. And this time I will use a slash, which is another way of saying division, divided by area. Of course, this is not the only kind of problem we might want to solve. Uh, for instance, we might have a problem where we know the pressure, we know the area, and we need to find the force. So again, what I'm going to do, I'm going to move my hand, I'm going to cover the force, and not surprisingly, what I get is that force equals to pressure times area. So let's write also this new formula. So in this case, again, using symbols, we have that force is equal to pressure times, I'm going to use the dot for multiplication, times area. As a final case, let's imagine that instead we have the force, we know the force we're applying, we know the pressure that uh, relates to this force, we want to find the area over which this force is applied. So we're going to move our hand to cover area, and we get our final formula, which is area equals to force over pressure. Let's write this final formula. So we have area equals to force. And again, I'm going to use the slash for division over pressure. So these are the three possible combinations. And again, uh, you can use your number sense in order to figure out how to arrange them. Uh, you can memorize them if you want. Or, if you're really at loss, you can use the magic triangle. Again, this is a very good way to rearrange physical formulas. Uh, we saw this in the case of speed. We saw now this in the case of pressure. And we're going to see it also in other examples. Now, we have seen, uh, ever since we talked about physical quantities, that in order to define a physical quantity, you also need to define its units. And remember, we're using the international system of units, also known as a metric system. In the international system of units, pressure does have a base unit. This base unit also takes the name of a scientist, in this case, a French scientist known as Pascal. So the unit for pressure in the international system of units is called the Pascal. And remember, this is the same rule we apply for force, where the unit was Newton. So when we write it in full, we're going to write it with the P as lowercase, because Pascal with P uppercase is the name of a scientist. Pascal with P lowercase is the name of a unit. On the other hand, if we want to abbreviate, now here is a new thing. We have an abbreviation which, which is made of two letters instead of just one. It's not just a big P, but it's PA, where A is lowercase. This is really, really important, okay? Now, I'm going to use this uh, denomination from now on, but be, be warned, uh, this is also how you can write it. But how much is a Pascal? Well, the Pascal is the base unit for pressure. So if you, if you remember what is pressure, now we have to write that one Pascal, one Pascal is equal to, remember, pressure is force of area. So here I should have the base unit for force, which if you remember is the Newton. So it's equal to one Newton, one 
newton over the base unit for area and remember in the international system of unit the base unit for area is the square meter so i'm going to write one square meter so what does this tell me that pressure of one pascal it's equivalent to a force of one newton and if you remember one newton is not such a big force okay and spread over a very large area an area of one square meter that's pretty big so you can already imagine that the pascal is a very small unit in real life uh, we're going to see that uh, when we're measuring pressures in pascals we're going to have pressures of the order of thousands of pascal or as we say using kilopascals k stands for thousand kilopascals this is what we're going to use more often or um, it might happen that very often we're going to use pressures as newtons newtons so let's write using symbols over not an area of square meters but over square centimeters and remember this is not the same as writing this so this unit is not the same as a pascal like many uh, important physical quantities uh, pressure has a long history of its own units and actually if you make a, a very quick web research you'll see there's really a huge amount of them okay i will just name a few which you might also have heard about uh, one of the most famous is the atmosphere which is uh, defined uh, or atm which is defined as the air pressure at sea level so it's very used in uh, when you talk about the weather uh, so we saw the pascal but we also if you go from a metric system to imperial units so where you have uh, pounds as unit for force and square inches uh, for unit of uh, area then you have something called PSI PSI which is an acronym which stands for pounds over square inches okay uh, then you have the TOR written with two R's okay which is a shorthand for Torricelli who was uh, this pupil of Galileo Galilei who for, for the first time measured the pressure of air then you have a very very weird one i'll just first write the symbol okay this is really weird but you might recognize here the symbol for millimeters so millimeters of hg those of you who've done chemistry you might recognize this is the chemical symbol of mercury so this is called millimeters of mercury and why this because um in the early days we measured the pressure from here using a thermometer an object actually very similar to a thermometer with a column of mercury then we have a bar and then we have very very many but these are some of the few you might encounter during your life just to finish our uh, lesson on calculating pressure let's see a worked example for instance let's imagine we're standing on the ground on our on two feet and we want to know what is the pressure we're applying right now on the ground of course like in any calculation of pressure you need two pieces of information first of all the force in this case the force will be your own weight so i just imagine this person has a weight of 600 newtons corresponds more or less to 60 kilograms so we're talking about an adult and then let's this is really a rough estimate let's imagine the foot area is 200 square centimeter remember we have to calculate both feet so very very quickly how we can do this so pressure no pressure is equal to the force in this case is 600 newtons divided by 200 and this is a very very simple calculation and the result is free but remember this is not free pascals this is free newtons over squares and it's a totally different unit okay in class then we're going to see our examples but for today that's all for mr boscarini goodbye